Hi, my name is Mike. Thanks for joining me today on my channel, Technically Church, where I share over 20 years of experience in audio, video, lighting, and multimedia. You can always find out more on my website at technicallychurch.com. Let's jump in. Today we're gonna to be talking about the snapshot scope settings. So there's a bunch of settings in here. What do they all mean? What saves when you uh, turn them on and off? So let's dig into what that looks like. So here on your screen, um, this is the screen that we're dealing with uh, today. This is the snapshot scope. So here's how we got here. If we start from home, we go to library and we're gonna say under snapshots, uh, we have save and save plus scope. So we're gonna hit save plus scope. And this brings up our scope screen, which allows us to save uh, certain elements of the board and not others, okay? So on the left-hand side here, um, this is what we wanna save. And then on the right-hand side is what pieces of those channels and items do you wanna save? So we're gonna be dealing mainly with the right-hand section here the configuration and the contents. Quick explanation here on the left, uh, this is how this works. So channels one through 40, um, you can turn them on and off. So now channels one through four are off and they're back on. So you could just say channel one, I wanna save channel one's attributes and then what attributes do you want to save? So we'll dig into what those are. So on the left here you have channels uh, one through 40 that you can uh, turn on and off. You have your eight auxes. You have your 16 uh, buses. So this is going to be uh, the attributes of that bus, okay? Not necessarily what's being sent to it. Uh, you have your four mains, your eight matrixes. You have all of your sources up here. And a lot of these, when you press them, you get a submenu. Uh, so you have your local, and then you can say local one through eight. Um, so that's going to be the source attributes saved. Same with outputs, the patching, the naming. So if you have link customization on, um, your naming is gonna save with the sources. So the sources and outputs are patching. The DCAs, again, it's gonna essentially save, you know, the fader mute for that uh, DCA. Mute groups and your effects racks. You know, it's gonna save what the effects are, the attributes of them, on, off, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's dig into the right-hand section. Let's start with configuration here. So you can see the blue means it's gonna save. Blue is on, so you can turn everything off here. Um, and we'll dig into what each one is. So when you go into these sub-menus, um, you have sub-items there as well. So I'm gonna turn them all off real quick, talk about them one by one. All right, so the first three items under configuration all uh, are referring to the main configuration of the board itself. So you have a config button, a surface button, and a preferences button. All right, so these pertain uh, to the config of the board. A lot of things in our setup menu, okay? So if we go to setup, you have several tabs here, general audio, surface, remote, and DAW. So the audio tab, and the surface tab, right, correspond with these settings here, config, surface, and preferences. Preferences are going to be under audio preferences. All right, so one quick note on these items. Uh, everything in the board doesn't necessarily save in here, in those preference windows. I didn't go through one by one in every single preference to see what saves. Uh, I just wanted to point you in the direction that those three buttons do correspond to the board preferences and setup. And if you wanted to save something there, you could dig in, but everything does not save necessarily. That's the one piece of this board that I find that I found that there are some setup items that are just global always. All right, <clears throat> next underneath here, we have left, center, right, and CC. CC is custom controls. That is all of your uh, user defined buttons over on the right hand side of your board, you've got your button pages and all that stuff. So you can set those up. Those are all called custom controls. So in each one of these, when you click them, you can see you get all of your layers. So the left hand section is the left hand side of your board. The center is uh, these eight channels right here. 
and then the right are the four on the right. So that's how that works. And then under each one, you get the corresponding layers, which are the corresponding button layers over here. So what is this gonna save? This is gonna save uh, what channels you have in that layer, right? So you can go to the user layer and you can rearrange all of your channels. So if you wanna save that in a snapshot, maybe you're switching it from snapshot to snapshot, uh, that's where you save what channels are in that layer. And it's also gonna save what layer is pressed. So if you save a snapshot with the left layer activated um, and user two is, is active and you save it, it's gonna remember that you were on user two. So if you're using the console and you're on user one and you load that snapshot, it's actually gonna switch you to user two. That could be good and bad. It just, uh, it's a good thing to be aware of. So that applies for left, center, right, and custom controls. It's gonna remember what those left, center, right channel layouts uh, are. It's gonna remember where you are on the layers. Same with custom controls, what the buttons are, what page you're on as well. So that's how you save all of that, and that's the configuration section. All right, let's move on to the contents section here. So first under contents, we have CUST, customization, all right? So this is gonna save the name of your channel and the icon. So the name and icon that you can give it. Uh, there is one important thing to note here. The wing is a little unique uh, from some of the previous boards that you can actually link the name and icon to the source. So that's really handy when you're moving channels around because the name stays with the source. Say your acoustic guitar You've named it acoustic, you gave it an acoustic icon. And by default on the wing, link customization to source is enabled. So that means that you can move that channel around and the name follows it. You can repatch it, the name follows it. If you have that on, it actually won't save in a snapshot because it's tied to the source, unless you're changing the source. So you could turn off link to customization, which really quickly I will show you where that's at. So I'm on channel one. We go to the name section here and you see this button link customization to source is on if you turn that off now that will save in this other screen all right so let's go back in here so customization is name and icon all right let's talk about tags so tags are going to save um, dcas and mute groups so that's how the wing works is they call them tags it's this channel is assigned to this DCA or these DCAs, this channel is assigned to this mute group. So it's gonna save those attributes in that snapshot of what DCA and mute groups it's a part of. So that's tags. All right, connection, C-O-N-N. -N. Connection is the patch and gain. So the gain is tied with the source, so it's gonna come with the patch. So if you needed to save, you know, the channel one is actually patched to stage snake input four, that's gonna save that patch, uh, the connection for that channel. So it's gonna save the patch and the gain. All right, then let's talk about the in settings, in with the setting wheel. So this is gonna save your gain and your trim. So you can save that independently from the patch and you can save the gain and the trim by selecting in. All right, now let's talk about filter. Filter is your low cut, your high cut, and your tilt EQ. So this is different than your equalizer. You have separate filters for your low cut, your high cut, high cut, and your tilt. So this is gonna save both if it's on or off, and it's gonna save the attribute of the frequency range that you're using uh, for those filters. All right, now let's move on to delay. Per channel, you can set a delay on the wing. So if you have a source that is out of sync for some reason, uh, with everything else, you can delay that channel by any number of milliseconds. So that would save that delay parameter both on and off and the delay amount. Next we have gate. So the gate on this channel, you know, on every channel can have its own gate. That is uh, how much audio does it take um, coming into the source before it opens up that channel, right? It will turn the channel off under the threshold. So that would save the gate parameter if the gate is on and all of the internal parameters of that gate, the threshold and everything else. 
All right, dynamics. Dynamics is typically a compressor. It's gonna be similar to the gate as far as what it saves. It's gonna save that dynamics line, whether it's on or off, the parameters of that compressor. Uh, but you can change what a dynamic is on the wing. It does not have to be a compressor. They have several other dynamics options in there. Uh, for example, they have expanders, auto riders, auto levelers, uh, so on and so forth. There's quite a few in there you can save, but you do have that dynamic slot on every channel and that would save those parameters. All right, pre and post are next. A little confusing at first glance on what that might be. What this is, is your insert slots. Every channel has two inserts. So I'm gonna show you this. Here on the screen, um, this is the first insert slot. And then this is the second insert slot. One is pre-fader. This little bar right here, this little uh, small icon, that's the fader. So this insert slot is pre-fader and this insert slot is post-fader. So you can insert all sorts of different effects, outboard effects, different things in each of those slots. You have one pre and one post. So back on the screen here, if we save a pre, it's gonna save the attributes that you have you know, settings, what you have set for that channel for that first insert slot pre. Now if we move over to post, it's gonna do the exact same thing, but with that second insert slot, it's gonna save the effects rack settings that you have on the insert slot, the one post fader. Now we'll move on to EQ. EQ is the equalizer, right? So you have uh, several bands of EQ that you can affect per channel. It's gonna save all those settings. It's gonna save the EQ gain, the frequency, and the Q. This is not saving the filter. So if you have a low cut or a high cut, it is not saving that. It's just saving the EQ parameters. On the wing, when you're viewing the EQ, uh, it will combine visually the equalizer and the low cut and the high cut. It will combine all that on one screen. So it's a little confusing, but it is separate when you save it, the filter, in the EQ. Next is pan. Pretty simple. It's going to save your pan settings per channel, uh, you know, left, right, center, whatever you set. All right. Then the mains, you have four mains. So when you press it, you get an option of one, two, three, or four. You can select them all or none. So I'm going to go ahead and select them all. So this is setting per channel. If that channel is going to one out of the four mains, the on off for it and the level that it's going to that main. All right, next is sends. So this is, uh, you know, sends on fader essentially, right, per channel. What fader level, if the channel is muted on or off in that bus send, this includes buses and matrixes. So you can select all of your buses, one through 16, and your matrixes, one through eight, which on firmware 3.0 can also act as buses. So you essentially have 24 buses if you need them. You can pick and choose uh, which ones you want to save, if not all, and it will save those parameters of that channel going into those sends. Next, we'll talk about fader. Uh, this is going to simply just save the fader setting for the channels that you've selected in that snapshot. Where is the fader? It's going to save it. Pretty simple there. Next is mute. Very similar and simple. Uh, it's going to save per channel again, whatever you select, if that mute is activated or not in that snapshot. And last is config. So this actually saves uh, on your screen here. If we go back to the home, you have your wrench. When you click the wrench, it allows you to readjust your um, processing chain. So you can say, I want it to compress first and then EQ or EQ first and then compress and then run the gate. You can adjust uh, where those are just by simply dragging them around. And you can also adjust your tap point. So this red line, the little red dot, uh, tells you where your tap point is for uh, pre and post. So essentially like if you're using in-ears, if your tap point is after the EQ, it's gonna send that equalizer to the in-ears. If your tap point is pre the EQ, it's not gonna send it to those in-ears. So that config in the scope settings is saving the, uh, the rack processing chain order and it's saving your tap point placement per channel. All right, so you would go through and you would pick 
If everything is selected, it's essentially saving all parameters on the whole board as a snapshot. You could then refine it down to one or more channels, just channel one, um, and just one attribute or any combination thereof. So as you can see, it's a super powerful way uh, with snapshots to save the entire board, to save uh, refine down to literally one channel, one fader position, one channel, mute on and off. You can save as little or as, uh, as much as you want in a snapshot to build out your show. So it's pretty cool. So I just wanted to run through each of those parameters and exactly uh, what they do save in those snapshots. Thanks for joining me today. Again, my name is Mike. You can always find out more on my website, technicallychurch.com, or on my YouTube channel, Technically Church. Look forward to seeing you soon.